one aspect about the development and the kind of evolution of the computer has been really fascinating for me personally to watch, but then it's even interesting to go back and read about because in hindsight, in some cases, it's actually kind of comical. Now, expansion slots are really the exception to the rule when you look at the history of the personal computer. Now, many aspects of the early PC were grossly miscalculated. Most people nowadays, when you tell especially really young people, the fact that when the first IBM 3270 PC started to appear in the workplace, there was an absolute lack of networking. There was no way built into those early PCs to connect that PC to another PC and share data. We did that by taking those giant floppy five and a quarter inch disks that would only hold 360K of data, and we would actually have to save data onto that disk, pull it out, take it to another machine, put it in the hard drive, close the door, and then, you know, load that file onto that particular computer. So there was no networking there. Memory. When the original DOS disk operating system was designed, it was determined that the computer would allot 64K, 64 kilobytes of space to hold the operating system in memory. And they actually only needed 32. They doubled it to 64, right? They doubled it to give them plenty of room. Well, we outgrew that in a matter of months. And it's laughable to think of only having 64K for memory now for the operating system. Storage space, same way. Almost everything about the early PC was grossly miscalculated. The mobility, the IBM 3270, I don't know what weighed, 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds. I just know the thing was heavy and it took up a quarter to a third of your desk when you put it on there. However, what's very interesting is one aspect that everybody understood completely was expansion. Everybody realized that the PC was going to change the way we lived and did business, and it would create an explosion of new possibilities. Now, this created a bit of a challenge. How did they build the PC to allow other functionalities to be created for it? Would they always have to create new motherboards for all new functionalities every time? IBM had the idea of expansion slots. These were slots that are attached to the motherboard that have connection pins that allow cards to be created and just kind of pushed or seated or snapped down into those pins, plugged in, if you will, and the card could determine what the functionality was and the expansion slot was wired onto the motherboard and can communicate with the CPU. Now, we're talking about things like network cards. and It didn't take long before people realized, hey, wait a minute, we need a card that we can plug in here we can attach a network cable to, and then we can connect two or more of these computers together and share data across the wire. Display graphics was another one. The first PCs had horrible displays. You could only show one color that was green, and then Compaq came out with an orange monitor that was a big deal. And then we got to eight colors, and then we got to 16 colors. And back then you'd buy a monitor that said it was 16 colors, but you'd have to choose which eight you could use at one time those sorts of things. And we quickly realized that graphics took a lot of CPU power and we had to offload that onto graphics cards and expansion slots became the home of our graphics cards. This just continued. Now the connections on the motherboard from those expansion slots to the CPU are what's called the expansion bus because it buses data from the expansion cards. And just like you see right here, are three PCI expansion slots. And you will notice if you were to zoom up and look, there are little pathways from here to various other aspects on the motherboard to allow whatever functionality is happening on these expansion cards to be communicated to the CPU, and in some cases, other parts of the motherboard, the North Bridge, the South Bridge, and so forth. Here's another expansion slot right here, and this is used for video. And so expansion slots give us the ability to drop different cards built to provide different functionalities or computing power in. And those expansion slots were only limited by the speed in which they could move data around on the motherboard or the speed of their bus. Now, again, think of a freeway. If you have a one lane road, traffic's a bad problem. If you have a two lane road, it's a little better. Four lane, go to somewhere like Los Angeles, you got eight and 12 lane freeways, and it allows many, many more cars at once 
to move down the freeway at the same speed. Same thing with these buses on your motherboard. And so what you're going to see is as these expansion slots began to evolve over the years, the buses got wider, the amount of data they could deal with at one time got faster, the clock speed, you know, the way we're syncing, think of a drummer in a band, he sets the beat that everybody else counts to, that's the clock speed in a computer. And all of this is why there are different slot types and bus speeds that you'll see as the computer evolves. So what we're going to do in the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about the different expansion slot types we have out there that you need to be familiar with on the exam. We'll get you up to speed on those and the differences between them.